Travis went good, so. In the temples of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we are given a new name. Whether we're first-timers or we get a new name for those who die. The new name is always the same throughout the world now. Huh. Kevin Hart has lost his glasses. That's what he reminds me of. So it wouldn't surprise me. I probably should have. There it is. Quick and easy to find. And it hasn't been deleted. Like my stuff has been deleted. So, anyway. Uh, we we're told that let's see if I can remember it uh, you were given a new name which you were told never to divulge nor forget um, uh, and I forgot let's see if I can find the uh, New name. Oh, right. Yeah, that's what screwed me up. Uh, brother, so and so have an authority and give you a new name for or in behalf of uh, who is dead. But you should always remember and which you must keep sacred and never reveal, except at a certain place that will be shown you hereafter. The name is. And for today. Uh, the 24th of August, it would have been Rebecca for women and Amulek for men. How did you know? Like I said, it's the same all over the world every single day. They have uh, every day of the month, and it's 31, so if it's February, then obviously you don't have the, the remaining days. But, uh, yeah, it's the same. So once you got this memorized, you can go in on any day, knowing the day, and you'll know what the name is. So it helps you as a temple worker, so you don't get confused and mix it up. When I was going to the temple every day, I started getting confused and mixing things up. But, uh, uh, the uh, new name is in Genesis. That's where we find it. And there's some new names that are not revealed by the Jews because they don't know that it's a new name. They instead come up with a theory that it's a separate document that's older or younger than the other document with the other name. No, guys. It's called a new name. It's the same story being told from the plagiarism of the original Egyptian document from which they got it from. And uh, if you're curious, you're going, what are you talking about, Travis? I don't understand. It's because nobody's ever told you. I'm the only one who knows about it because I discovered it. It's amazing how much you don't know when you come across somebody who's an actual pioneer in the field. So all these PhDs and so forth. And so... You have in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, you have these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Yahweh Elohim made the earth and the heavens. Ta da! There's his new name. He was given. Yahweh is his new name. Yah is his original name. And it's right there in Genesis chapter 1. Can't you see it? 
Don't you read it? Of course you're not. You're looking at the English, which is a poor translation. And in the, the Hebrew, you got to take out all the vowels. Go back to the original consonantal form to see it. But yeah, the head god that brought forth the gods together with the heavens and the earth. See, Joseph Smith was right. This is what I was looking for an answer for. Is how did Joseph Smith translate the King Follett Discourse from the Hebrew text of the Bible? How is what the Jews gave us wrong? And so that was my quest. And I figured it out. And so, yeah. So because this was written during the Roman period of time, you've, you've still got your corruptions of the text, but you can, I can see uh, what the original was intended to be when I find the Egyptian document that originates for it. All of the errors that have crept in over time can be dispelled, especially the Babylonian stuff. Seventh day of creation, pff, get out of here that Babylonian creation out of here but yeah most people think it's Tiamat in verse 2 dum 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 <sighs> my dad fell for that con but you know when you're only talking to Assyriologists Assyriologists are gonna say they're the oldest culture and that Egypt came from them they're using their religious bias of Noah and his three sons Coming from Turkey. <coughs> and so, yeah, there's the one about uh, Jacob getting the new name of Israel. And you'll notice that I've been teasing the translator for the church who botched the translation. And he never claims translator. Did you guys not catch this? When they list off their gifts prophet, seer, revelator, and president. And the president keys are not even from Moses. They're Peter's keys. It's not the keys that lead the church. And so, I, what is the significance of a new name? Well, it's not the way the church does it. Because your new name is supposed to be about you and what you've accomplished that's your new name and so instead of Yah he's now changed to Yahweh and so he's got that fuller name having fulfilled his assignment which was to create Adam and Eve not in Geb in the Egyptian that's what it's referring to the Heliopolis creation glyph and it can be translated in multiple ways and so not just one translation comes from it but uh, uh, Jacob usurper that was the name for his birth why because he was holding on to the ankle of his brother Esau who was named Esau because he was hairy and so if Esau had prevailed against Jacob don't laugh I'm gonna go <laughs> Esau would have gotten the new name instead but uh, because Jacob actually fulfilled his mission in life to usurp the birthright and the blessing of his older brother he gets the new name and so what's the new name let God prevail what the bleep <laughs> you're now calling Jacob God no or you're calling it Jesus Definitely no. And so, no, it's Yah, remember? The one from Genesis chapter 1, the Hebrew God, Yah, Prince of God. And it's right there in Genesis. Anybody could figure it out. In fact, let's go over that. Because, yes, prevail is in the translation, and that's where people get screwed up. But, dear God. <laughs> J 
Jacob, Israel. Genesis 32, 28. Okay. So then we'll go to Blue Letter Bible. I really like theirs because they give you various translations to pick from. So if I'm needing to do the research in another thing, it helps. Let's say it was Genesis 32, right? And then Jacob's fear of Esau. Well, yeah, you stole the birthright and blessing from him. But Israel, for as a prince, thou hast power with God. And so, let's turn it into the Westminster Leningrad Codex. go if I have it partial screen so we go down to 32 no 28 uh, oh, that's interesting hmm. sorry Okay, so there's Israel for Saretz. It's taking the S and the R from Israel. Which is a prince. And then there's God. Prince of God. It's, ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. See, when you know the Paleo Hebrew, and as I'm the decipher of Paleo Hebrew, there's a lot more information. Like I said, Egyptian, you can translate it multiple ways because Paleo Hebrew comes from Egyptian. Each character has multiple meanings, and then when you combine the characters together, it creates a vocabulary of exponential translation. And so, yes, I'm seeing the sun all over this place. <clears throat> yeah, prevailed is not even associated with it. This is the wrong word. And so, yeah, Prince of God, not prevail. Prevail is not the word. It's right here. Not prevail. It's a different word for prevail. And so... Yeah, I don't know who those Hebrew scholars that Nelson was claiming responsibility for the white supremacist definition. <coughs> but wrong. But yeah, now that he's fulfilled, you know, what is a prince? He's the heir to the kingdom, the kingship. You know, the prince of Egypt, Moses. And so, uh, yeah, Yah is the Hebrew God, and as uh, Moses would go on to tell us, there's the prophecy of a future man like Moses. And so this is understood in Genesis as well, which is a completely separate book. It's not the five books combined. They were all separate books by different authors. And, uh, and so the hero story of Genesis is Joseph and they translate that name incorrectly too because where do you have at the beginning Yah and so Yah Seth and when you see the story he's got the reeds the bundled up and his reeds are bigger than his brothers and his parents <coughs> and they give obeisance to his mighty reed and so that's what Yosef is. It's the prophecy of what he's to be. Yah of the reed. And so he has the dream. And we are not given his new name. That comes from Egypt. He's given a new name in Egypt. Which uh, has 
Ta in it, if I remember correctly. Uh, not sure if we can find that. Joseph. to me another son there it is it's the second one verse 41 or chapter 41 verse 45 uh, Pharaoh gave Joseph a new name uh, <coughs> Zapnath Pania so, a little bit complicated <coughs> But uh, if we go to 4145, get back into Blue Letter Bible. One Phil's Dream 45, Westminster Leningrad Codex. Go. And 40. And Zafnat Hmm Yeah, this is a doozy to quote <laughs> unredacted memo that came out today but uh, interesting hmm and so yeah <laughs> yep yeah he, he's yeah mm -hmm. he's the hero let's just put it that way it would take another video to explain all of it for you I'd have to go through each letter for you and explain what each one of them means and then combined and in the context of the story and so on. but understand it's it's awesome <laughs> how did the Jews miss this dear God so yeah new names are given upon achievement however there is one new name that is the name for his birth and his completion. He does not change the name. It is his one and only name. Jesus, right? It was Jehovah in the premortal existence. Because Brigham Young said so in the temple. <sighs> he screwed everybody up with that. All right, so we're looking for Isaiah. Emmanuel. Yeah, Emmanuel. I can just give it to you. And call his name Emmanuel. <laughs> Amen El, sun god from the Egyptians. The hidden name that even John the Revelator talks about. You watched that video of mine, right? So you know what I'm talking about? It's in Revelation 19. That's for eight April 2024 it's coming up are you sure you you missed my video they've got hallelujah all over the place here There it is, verse 12. Okay, his eyes are as a flame. Sun god at noonday, Amun of the Egyptians. And, uh, and so, he's a flame of fire. Upon his head, many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. That's the meaning of Amun. And they screwed up on Wikipedia they uh, they put instead wait a minute no 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 you're not Wikipedia I'm 
moon which would be the ah do you think a professor in egyptology would have been writing this rather than some joe schmo but uh Uh, yeah, the hidden one or invisible. No, it's the unknown name. And we know this, Egyptologists of PhD quality, should know this because of the stories about Amun. You have one where uh, Hathor uh, comes to Amun and says, tell me your name so I can have your power. And, you know, she eventually figures out the name and she goes on a drunken murder spree of mankind as a cow, her animal form. And uh, she has a cow. I wonder if that's where it came from. <laughs> it's Bart Simpson that created it. Don't have a cow, man. But uh, whoever was responsible for it, that's where it comes from. And so... Uh, the name is the unknown name and if you're wondering what about Joseph did Joseph know anything about it did Joseph know did he did he I want to know yeah section 107 you guys should all know your scriptures by now don't you you're in scripture mastery weren't you many are called but few are frozen quick find it well I only know by associative memory like Travis Why the first is called the Melchizedek Priesthood is because Melchizedek was such a great high priest. Before his day, it was called the Holy Priesthood after the order of the Son of God. God is a title, it's not a name. I had to keep telling my second ex about this. She keeps thinking when I go, oh God. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. It's not his name, it's a title. <laughs> But what is his name? Amun. It's technically ah. It's a guttural in in uh, Semitic Hebrew, but uh, it's the sun symbol in Paleo Hebrew. And so, uh, what you have with Amun from Isaiah from the Paleo Hebrew is the sun symbol because you write the left. So I guess this would actually be left to right for you on your screen, wouldn't it? And so, it's the sun symbol for Amun, that's a symbol. And then you have the M, which is a water W symbol from the Egyptian characters. And then the J stroke, which is for men, a man is a J stroke. And so, a man with water pouring over his head. Aquarius. Oh. That's the uh, high priest symbol in Egyptian character. <coughs> and so, uh, pay attention, because where do you get a new name again? And then, uh, and what you get before you get the new name? And what do you take upon yourself the name of? In that place? Yeah, it's all right there in the temple initiatories. And then uh, that's why you're given the Melchizedek priesthood. You're given the name Amun, the Amun priesthood. You take upon yourself the name of Christ. You become Christ. That is technically your new name. However, church screwed it all up. But uh, uh, then the N is the uh, crown and J-stroke. <laughs> King. And if it's for land kingdom. So Samson, Shemesh, son, the N at the end, suffix determinative identifying Shemesh as a person to be king. King of the sun, sun king. <clears throat> and so yes, it's the holy priesthood after the order of Amun. And it's son Amun, as Joseph Smith tells us so. 
the name is the same as the father. Oh, just like Joseph said in Second Nephi chapter three. Oh wait. So is that man like Moses in Second Nephi chapter three. And so is Moses. He ties them all together there. And so Joseph, son of Joseph, the hero story of the book of Genesis, and then Ammon, son of Ammon, who is the man like Moses, the hero story for the other four books. And uh, that's Ammon, Melchizedek priesthood. It was lengthened out rather than condensed with the word. And so out of respect or reverence to the name of the Supreme Being, to avoid the too frequent repetition of his name, because no man knows his name, thus can't repeat it. The church in ancient days called it after Melchizedek, which is the same thing. King and priest of the sun god. Hilarious. But uh, in 84, he talks about Moses as Akhenaten taking away the Amun priesthood and replacing it with the Aten priesthood. He calls it the Aaronic priesthood in scripture in the Bible. But but uh, yeah the the Jews uh, would replace Adonai which is Aten of Akhenaten with uh, Hashem the name the hidden name and uh, uh, and thus replace the Amun and so it's kind of weird that uh, the Jews uh, use Aten to cover up Amun when Amun is the name of their actual god from Isaiah. Hilarious. So, uh, I've already gone over it. We'll just do it in a different format, different fashion. So I, I hope you understand uh, how new names are supposed to work. Uh, Egyptians received the name Osiris. Uh, that's in the facsimiles. Uh, number two. The prize. Facsimile number two. Uh, that's where Shishak. Yeah. Uh, Shishak Osiris. It's a. Uh, It, they're upside down from the Smith Papyra put in in their place I believe that was the case depending on when the damage where the damage occurred on the thing um, looks like eight so eight yeah it's number eight on fact only number two which uh, Joseph gives as his explanation Contains writing that can only be revealed unto the cannot be revealed unto the world, but is to be had in the holy temple of God. Yeah, the new name. Ta da! Get that from any apologist in this church. You won't. That's the whole problem. And Nelson? <laughs> mm -mm. Never from Nelson would you ever get that. You got exclusive material right from me. Yippery. And so, yeah, he knew what he was doing. But, uh, <coughs> uh, we know that 2020 is his Jubilee year, right? Because you're following all my videos for years now. When I did the series on it. And so, he was born in 1970. And the date, as we know, right, is St. Patty's Day. Because St. Patty uh, was uh, embellished by the uh, English Druids way back in the early 300s or before, or whenever he existed. When was St. Patrick? St. Patrick, uh, 5th century, okay, so it would have been in the 500s, <coughs> since he was in the 400s, yeah, 
And so the 500 English druids <coughs> uh, told the story of how he was uh, chasing out the serpents from Ireland, which everybody knows in Ireland were already chased out long before that. And so what is what are these druids talking about? Well, the druids did not write down their name. It was the hidden name that no man knew, which means they were the sun gods, Amuns. <coughs> and they were prophesying about one of their descendants, Amun, son of Amun, uh, who would uh, be born and have a, a death sign with it, a birth and a death sign. So Samuel, name of God, what's the name of God? We don't know because it's the name. Yeah, it's Amun. Uh, you see what the Book of Mormon was doing for you? And uh, it talks about the birth and the death signs. And uh, uh, everything prophesies and points to this. Eight, April 2024, when it crosses America, X marks the spot. And the evil people want to use it to destroy the world and form their kingdom of Lucifer, whereas the true um, order are hoping that they can conquer and that the prophecy will come to pass as his name is supposed to be Amun from his birth his father being Amun not Heavenly Father though the 18th dynasty did have a scenario for that with Hapsetsut the first queen of the 18th dynasty <coughs> I think the only queen well no uh, there may have been near the end a mother's involvement but uh, yeah, there was a lot of chaos at the end, and that's the new dynasty, new family dynasty. And uh, uh, and so, 17th of March, 1970, is the date all Mormons are supposed to be looking for, right? Because Mormons know he's going to be Mormon. Do you not watch any of my videos? Joseph Smith himself gave it to us. Dear God. Section 103. And verse 16. <laughs> it's, Therefore I will raise up unto my people a man who shall lead them like as Moses led the children of Israel. That's the Deuteronomy 18 verse 15. And uh And so, uh, who's my people, Mormons? Give you a hint. Mormons. And a male. And then man like Moses. <coughs> and so what's his name? Amun. Sun God. And it's a surname. I, I saw a thing on uh, by a rabbi talking about this why the Jewish names became surnames. It's because when they came to America they needed a first and a last name and so the people designated their first name as the last name and thus became the individual families of Cohen or uh, David or etc. Even Young comes from that. And so uh, as I went over with you, he would have gotten his new name. And I find this fascinating because Benson's of the great and abominable church. He has no authority, no authority over the temple, and thus no authority over the new names. But he, the man like Moses, Mormon, would have gone through the temple in uh, 1989, 19 years old. Unless he was a bad guy, he had to you know postpone for several years until he's worthy. Didn't pay his tithing. So, 1989. I did the sign in the heavens for it, so it's 1989. <coughs> and uh, and so I uh, think of the new name, and I'll give you a hint. 
it's not Moroni. It's instead someone else who came to Joseph Smith in his bedroom. In the dream, not literal history. Yeah, Nephi. And it has to do with Nephi being first and second, third and fourth Nephi, just as first, second, third, fourth kings. Christ. And uh, first and second kings is often named first and second Samuel name of God but uh, the Christ is Ammon and so Nephi comes to Joseph Smith in the Joseph Smith papers and uh, talks about who the real Christ of Mormons is supposed to be as Joseph Smith has to tell everybody because they're all being converted by Brigham and Heber as Jesus Christians and so he has to correct the record and set things straight for the evil people that have tried to change it to a great and abominable church with a great and abominable Christ which was all the Gospels were messianic literature they were prophecies about Ammon and Matthew for example quotes from Isaiah and still calls him Jesus <laughs> it's just hilarious and then yeah second Nephi or um, second chapter of Matthew uh, you watch the video where I explain my tailbone right uh, it talks about when he's coming to Utah or when he'll be in Utah come on guys keep up with me but uh, yeah he goes over and says that that prophet that Moses is talking about the one like Moses is the Christ and he's described Joseph describes Nephi as the Sun at noonday Ammon of the Egyptians Sun God see what he's doing there and so yes on May 6th because it's after the, uh, the first year at BYU or Ricks or BYU Hawaii whichever one he went to <coughs> he would come home he would end up giving his report on uh, the uh, Mother's Day talks and, and uh, you know, then he'd go right out into the MTC <coughs> where would he go on his mission I wonder wah, 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 wonder but yeah, that's the 6th of May is when he would have gone. I did the sign in the heavens for it to show you. And so, yeah, Seth. If you have the new name Seth, oh, the church hates you. <laughs> you are called Satan. <laughs> Hilarious. Do they currently have a Satan? No. Okay. So currently all of you are saved <laughs> from humiliation. But those of my generation, <laughs> everybody from uh, 1983 to 1993. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Alright, so. That's how it works. And so, yeah, I've gone over the parents' names. Who does Esau seek comfort in immediately after he loses the birthright and blessing? Judith. That's his mother's name. And so, uh, yeah, he comes out of the great and abominable church. That's the prophecy, just like Horus wins because he comes out of the great and abominable church as the branch from uh, Lebanon cedars of Lebanon that gives you Ezekiel uh, 17 uh, yeah let's go over I almost forgot didn't I you didn't remind me this is already 40 minutes I'm just I'm bored this this is not a life I used to have four computers running and <coughs> 
I was getting so much stuff done until I was attacked. But that was the whole point, is to stop my work. To stop the work on the 200 pound Egyptian gold plates. <laughs> so Matthew chapter 2, right there in verse 1, that's when he's coming. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Utah. Uh, of the great and abominable prophet. Yep. So there it is. The false Christ. Huh. Fascinating. You're going, tell us, what's the date? <sighs> I have to do everything for you. Of course, it would be nicer if... I probably should do a playlist for every month. <coughs> so that would make it easier for you guys to find things. <sighs> Revelation chapter 12. <coughs> Remember? Jesus born Bethlehem. There appeared a great wonder in heaven. Like Isaiah says, a sign. A woman clothed with the sun and a moon under her feet Potter, and upon Frank her head Potter, a, a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried to Balaam at birth, pain to be delivered. And the Joseph Smith translation correctly moves verse 5 to verse 3 as part of this sign. And she brought forth a man child, Jupiter, who is Zeus, who is Yah, who is Amun. Who's to rule all nations with a rod of iron? Oh, that's in the Book of Mormon, isn't it? Yeah. Their child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Hmm. Why is there no footnotes about God and to his throne? Did they miss it? Because in 1 Kings, in the Book of Mormon, chapter 1, Talking about the learning of the Jews to write messianic literature, which is a type of fiction, not literal history. Because <coughs> it's prophecy, their manner of prophesying. The learning of the Jews is messianic literature and a type of prophecy fiction. And so Lehi, which means jawbone, being overcome with the spirit, carried away into a vision. So it's literal, right? Even though he saw the heavens open, and he thought he saw God sitting upon his throne. And look, he's talking about Jupiter descending from heaven and the sun at noonday. Hmm, isn't that interesting? And then verse 10, 12 others following him. Yeah, that's the birth sign. And then it's right there at the beginning of the latter days for Jerusalem. Do you see what they did here? Mormons get all upset if you don't call it literal history. It was Joseph Smith Sr. He was a Jewish mystic. He wrote in the learning of the Jews, which is prophecy. Messianic literature. That's what he's doing here. And so what if he uses... Solomon Spaulding's, which was in possession of Sidney Rigdon's manuscript. They're trying to teach us something from this. The Bible's already plagiarized, so they plagiarized the Book of Mormon. <laughs> it all comes back to the Egyptian documents. And so Babylon, yeah. Doctrine and Covenants 116, Babylon, which shall perish. Really? I thought it perished a long time ago with the Persians conquering them. Yeah. It's trying to tell us something. Alrighty. Yay. And you're probably pissed that I didn't give you the date. 23rd of September 2017. I have to give everything to you.